Okay guys, so this week we are going to continue with calculating the force per unit length of the wall for Rankine's active or passive state. Alright, last week we calculated the force per unit length of the wall for the at rest state, remember? So today we are going to continue with um, Rankine's active or passive state. I'm going to jump straight away into calculation because I think you will understand better once you do the calculation inshallah. If you are interested in um, knowing more about how the formulas um, shown in this example were derived, then you can refer to the textbook or you can um, Google. Alright, for those with a textbook, um, today we are going to uh, do I mean I'm going to show you guys how to solve example 13.7 over here all right if you look in this in this figure we have um, a retaining wall the total height is six meter and then we have two layers of sand the upper layer is um, above the groundwater table and the lower layer is obviously below the groundwater table and if you notice, if you focus on the friction angle, see, the friction angle for these layers are different. The upper layer, the friction angle is 30 degree, and the lower layer, it is 35 degree. So how to solve this thing? All right, so let's do this. And let's sort this out. So first, all right, I'm going to write down here. I hope you guys can see what I'm going to write properly. So how, how to do this? So we'll start with at z equals to um, zero meter, okay? Which means at here, okay? This is z actually, okay? Z is the Daft, uh from the ground surface so this is that okay so at z equals to zero meter so the vertical effective stress equals to what gamma h all right so gamma is for the first layer i mean for the upper layer the gamma is 16 isn't it and then h is obviously zero so our Vertical effective stress is also zero kilonewton per meter square. And then now we are going to calculate the um, Rankine's uh, active earth pressure. Remember, this equals to. Um, active earth pressure coefficient times vertical effective stress, all right? And where Ka is equal to, you have to re refer this um, formula in the book, okay? Ka equals to one minus sine uh, friction angle divide by 1 plus sine friction angle all right this is actually also equals to tangent square 45 minus friction angle sorry divide by 2 okay um, you have to use this formula if C equals to zero if cohesion is zero then these are the i mean you can use either of this formula to calculate your active um, earth pressure coefficient okay and then so it is one minus sine okay friction angle so you have two friction angle 30 degree and 35 degree so since z equals to zero meter 
so it is basically we're interested in the uh, upper layer now we're interested in the upper layer so therefore the friction angle is 30 degree okay divide by 1 plus sine friction sorry 30 I'm sorry 30 degree and then you calculate this okay you will get please bear with me 1 minus sine 30 degree divided by 1 plus sine 30 degree so you will get zero point three 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 so if you use this formula you will get the um, same answer all right so therefore the ranking uh, active pressure equals to 0 0.3333 times 0 so obviously this is 0 kilonewton per meter square all right and what's the next one the next one is your pore water pressure so how much is your pore water pressure as that equals to 0 which is up here so obviously it is um, 0 kilonewton per meter square okay so then for the first layer and the next one is when Z equals to 3 meter so this one please um, focus because remember I told you just now uh, in this example the friction angles are different okay the upper layer has I mean the upper layer is uh, 30 degree uh, for the friction angle while the lower layer is 35 degree all right so when we said z equals to 3 meter so this is actually for the top layer for the top layer which is here okay I'm, I'm gonna zoom this okay I'm gonna sorry I'm going to um, draw this again so that uh, you can understand it better so it is here okay so this is your um, upper layer okay upper layer and this is your lower layer and this is your groundwater table so three meter here just uh, directly above the groundwater table so basically we are interested up to this uh, depth okay so okay so we repeat the process it's, it's the same uh, vertical effective stress equals to um, gamma h and then gamma is which one so this is the first one okay gamma that we are going to use I mean the unit weight of soil that we are going to use here is um, the unit weight of soil for the upper layer which is 16 all right so 16 times h is 3 so you do the maths therefore the vertical effective stress is 48 okay 48 remember the unit kilonewton per meter square all right and now we're going to calculate the uh, Rankine's uh, active pressure equals to uh, Ka times vertical effective stress so Ka is this one okay Ka of the upper layer okay 0 0.3333 times 48 so we got uh, active pressure equals to approximately uh, 16 kilonewton per meter square okay all right and the next one is again pore water pressure pore water pressure 
what is the ball water pressure here? Okay, so this is the uh, the upper layer. So basically, we assume the um, sand here to be dry since it is um, above the groundwater table. So therefore, our pore water pressure here is zero kilonewton per meter square. All right. Okay. So since we have two uh, different friction angles, so we will do another one at z equals to three meter, but this one is for the bottom layer. Okay, so I'm going to draw one more time. So this is um, our groundwater table. Okay, so this is our ground water table. So three meter here is this one. Okay, the soil below, just directly below the uh, groundwater table. All right. So therefore, our vertical effective stress equals to gamma h. Okay, equals to okay. So now, which gamma are we using? Which gamma? Gamma for the upper layer or the lower layer? Okay. We are interested. We are still interested in gamma for the first layer. Why? Because this this soil is still at three meter. Remember, it is still at three meter from the ground surface. This is ground surface. Okay. This is actually directly uh, below the groundwater table. Still at three uh, meter from the ground surface. So this layer soil layer here it is supporting it is still supporting this soil okay basically it is still supporting uh, the the upper layer the soil up here so that's why for gamma we are still interested in gamma for the first layer which is still 16 okay 16 times it is still 3 isn't it so therefore the answer is still the same 48 kilonewton per meter square so this is vertical effective stress okay and then now uh, we'll do the same so the ranking uh, active uh, earth pressure so this is k a vertical effective stress so now guys which k a are we interested in okay okay to uh, avoid you from uh, getting confused I'm going to name this remember we calculated the first ka so I'm going to name this ka1 okay and this one is ka2 all right sorry um, my my ugly handwriting here all right so where Ka equals to 1 minus the same formula 1 minus sine friction angle divided by 1 plus sine friction angle. So this is Ka2, remember? Okay, we are here already. So this is the lower lower layer. So the friction angle is 1 minus sine friction angle is 35, isn't it? 35 degree divide by 1 plus sine 35 degree therefore your Ka2 equals to <laughs> just bear with me 1 minus sine 35 divide by 1 plus sine 35 so it is 0 0.27 so to complete the calculation therefore your uh, ranking active um, earth pressure equals to 0 0.27 times 48 and this equals to 12.96 which is almost 13 kilonewton per meter square all right 
And then what about the pore water pressure? Pore water pressure, how much is the pore water pressure? Okay, it is still equals to zero, right? Because it is like exactly at three from the ground surface, so it is at this layer. So we assume at this layer, no pore water pressure yet acting on the wall. So it is still zero kilonewton per meter square. Okay. And last but not least, at z equals to six meter. All right. So the vertical effective stress equals to okay equals to what 48 okay 48 plus gamma h do you guys understand this 48 because um now we are interested in this layer here okay this this layer here which is at a depth of six meter from the ground surface so basically this layer is supporting uh, the load here so load here is 48 kilonewton per meter square plus plus this layer here the one that we are going to calculate now okay you understand so 48 plus gamma h equals to 48 plus remember about the gamma okay so now we are at the um, lower layer so the gamma sorry the unit weight is saturated unit weight so we have to minus the unit weight of water because we, we're just interested in um, uh, the pressure caused by soil for the pore water pressure we are going to calculate it separately remember okay so basically 18 18 minus unit weight of water which is 9.81 times h h is three so when you do this you get the vertical effective stress equals to okay please bear with me so it is um 72.57 kilonewton per meter square okay and then we'll proceed with the uh, Rankine's uh, active earth pressure this equals to Ka2 basically isn't it because we are at the second layer or the lower layer Ka2 times vertical effective stress Ka2 is 0 0.27 times uh, 72.57 when you do this you will get uh, Rankine's active pressure equals to nineteen, approximately uh, nineteen point six kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so now the pore water pressure it is equals to unit weight of water times the height. So unit weight of the water is 9.81 and the height is 3, isn't it? Okay, so your pore water pressure is, I'm sorry, your pore water pressure here is 29.43 kilonewton per meter square. All right. So that's it people. So now, uh, all you need to do to avoid from being confused or uh, leaving out some values, I suggest for you guys to um, transfer all these um, values, all these pressures into um, a table format. So it will help you uh, with a subsequent cal calculation. Alright, so the values have been transferred into this table format. So, um, as you can see here, um, we are interested in column uh, 2 and 3, remember? 
okay, I'm gonna highlight this. So we are interested in column. Um, in this column and in this column. All right. So what we will do next is we will draw the graph. Remember. Okay. So the graph that we are going to draw the first one is this one. Okay. You draw the axis first. Okay. So this is the ranking active um, earth pressure. And please remember to write down the unit in kilonewton per meter square. Okay. And the one pointing downward is the, uh, sorry, you cannot see, okay, now you can see, is the Z, and the unit is meter, all right. And the second one, so if you can draw this a line with the first graph, so this is the pore water pressure, and the unit is kilonewton per meter square, all right. And pointing downward is the same, this is the Z which is depth from the ground surface and the unit is meter. All right, so you just um, start drawing the graph, okay? And um, let's, let's start with this one, with the Rankine at rest uh, earth pressure, okay? So at z equals to zero, um, the pressure is also zero, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do this line, this is for, uh, this is for three meter. This is for zero, isn't it? Okay, let's make this a line. This is three, and this is six. Okay. Right, like that. Something like that. All right. So, okay, let's do this first. At z equals to zero, then the uh, active earth pressure is also zero. Z equals to three. It is here 16 isn't it and then at z equals to 3 there is another value which is um, 13 this is not to scale okay remember this is not to scale and then at z equals to 6 it is 19.6 and then what you have to do okay, I'm going to use a, a different color I'm going to use black okay, please use ruler okay I'm sorry I don't have ruler around here Okay, so, and then we're gonna, uh, how to say, connect all the points, okay? There, and go there, and it goes down here, okay? So that's the first one. And the second one is, um, okay, this is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. This is zero, this is zero, isn't it? So you refer to the values in, in your graph. And at z equals to uh, 6, this is 29.43. Okay, so you uh, connect these two uh, points, all right? And then, so wait, what, what do we have to do now, actually? So we have to calculate the force per unit length of the wall for Rankine's active states, okay? So it is, um, I'm sorry, sorry, please bear with me. Okay, so basically we have to calculate the PA, the force per unit length of the wall for Rankine's active states, PA. It is equals to what? Okay, it is equal to the areas under the graph. Okay, so basically I'm going to um, divide this into simpler shapes. So I'm going to do this, like that. Okay, so this is the first shape, triangle, and then this looks like a square, okay, and then this is another triangle and another triangle here. So we have four shapes, okay. So basically PA, which is the force per unit length of the wall, equals to the summation of the areas under the graph. So area 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, so this is basically what we did um, last week. All right, so what is area one? Area one is a triangle, so half times 16 times three, right? Plus area two is, wait, okay, 13 times three, all right? Plus area three is half, Time. So what is the 
what is the width of this triangle so it is 19.6 minus 13 so it is 6.6 6.6 times uh, 3 plus the area for I mean the area of the uh, fourth shape another triangle okay times 29.43 times uh, what is it the height three isn't it all right excuse me all right so let's do this this is the first one is just bear with me this is 24 plus Uh, 13 times 3 is this is 39 this is nine point nine and the last one is forty four point one five so therefore the force per unit length of the wall is one hundred and seventeen one hundred and seventeen point zero five kilonewton per meter so this this is the answer okay this is basically the resultant the resultant force all right so if we look back at our um, task here so we did this already so the first one okay this is done the force per unit length of the wall for Rankin's active state so this is done so now we have to find this people the location of the resultant force so how to do this okay we did this already last week so how to do this is we uh, it is based on um, moment okay so we want to know where is it located so this is the wall I'm gonna explain one more time okay this is your wall so this is the resultant which is 117.05 kilonewton per meter but where where is the location measure from the bottom of the wall where is it what is this distance here okay this this distance so we, we're gonna find this so we use the um, uh, moment principle so we know that uh, the PA is 117.05 but we don't know the times Z isn't it so we don't know this so we want to find this so this is but we know okay we know the uh, distance from the bottom for each of this um, force so we have four forces here okay I'm going to use a different color please bear with me so I'm going to use red okay for 24 we know the distance if measured from the bottom so this is 24 okay this is your 24 and 39 is okay here at the center of this um, square this is 39 and 9.9 .9 is one third okay from the bottom from the height of the triangle this is 9.9 .9, and this is also a third uh, from the height of this um, triangle so this is 44 sorry 0.15 so we know the distance measured from the bottom for each of this force okay so how to do this is all right so 24 how to do this uh 24 times what is the distance it is one third of the height 
plus 3. Is that right? Okay. One third uh, of the height of this triangle. So from here to here is one third. Okay. This is one third. Okay. And then we have to uh, add another 3 meter because we want to measure from the bottom. Okay. So that's why it's one third from uh, the total height of the triangle plus 3. This is the square. This is the height of the square at the bottom. Okay. Plus 39 times, this is very simple, 39 times 3 divided by 2 plus, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to do this uh, quickly. So 9.9 .9 times third times uh, the height of the triangle plus 44.15 times a third from the height. Okay? So when you do this, you do all this maths, Z will be equals to 208.43 divided by 117.05 okay okay I'm sorry this is 208 point sorry I'm sorry okay let me delete all of this this is 208.55 guys divide by okay this uh, we move to this side so divide by 117.05 therefore the location of the resultant force measured from the bottom is divided by 117.05 so this is this equals to 1.78 meter okay you have to write this a bit measured from where okay so measure it from the bottom of the wall okay so this is the answer so you can do a bit of summary okay or maybe you can draw a bit here so this is your Sorry, I hope you can see this. So this is your wall just now. And um, this is six. Six meter, isn't it? Total height is six meter. Right, so the resultant force is basically mm, somewhere here. Okay, so this is your PA equals to 117.05 kilonewton per meter and then it is at 1.78 meter from the bottom of the from the bottom of the wall okay so yeah you get the answer for the second task as well so this is also done Okay, uh, I just want to uh, point out uh, one thing here. Uh, this is in this example, you you were asked to uh, calculate the force per unit length of the wall for Rankine's active state. You might be asked to calculate the force per unit length of the wall for Rankine's passive passive state. Okay. You might be asked to calculate uh, the force in passive state. Okay, so how to do this? How to do this is basically just um, use a different uh, formula to calculate the uh, Kp. Okay, basically for passive state, you have to calculate the Kp, isn't it? Kp is the passive. Earth pressure coefficient, 
and then if um, C is zero, if the cohesion is zero, the same like this case, then your Kp equals to uh, one, sorry, one plus sine friction angle divided by one minus sine friction angle. And the rest um, of the calculation will be um, the same. All right.